Authorities tonight may have recovered the body of Rutgers student Tyler Clemente, his roommate, secretly taped Clemente's sexual encounter with another man. On Twitter, he encouraged others to watch Clemente's date. Shortly after learning he had been spied on, Clemente jumped off the George Washington Bridge. Clemente's final posting on his Facebook page read, jumping off the GW Bridge, sorry. Tyler Clemente was 18 years old. He had the whole world in front of him, described as smart, successful. He was enjoying his freshman year when he suddenly found out his roommate had secretly recorded intimate moments and then posted them on social media, opening Tyler up to humiliation, to cyberbullying, and not long after, he took his own life, jumping off the George Washington Bridge. After losing Tyler, Jane Clemente has taken on a new fight to make sure this never happens to anyone's child. Again, she is pushing Congress for the passage of a new law named for her her son, honoring her son's life by helping others, and she joins us now. We appreciate you taking some time for us, uh, and we continue to extend our condolences because we know this is something you live with every day. Thank you. Yes. What has changed in the years since you lost your son? What do you believe has changed as you've taken up this fight against bullying and specifically cyberbullying? Well, I do think that Tyler's story has um, raised awareness and has brought cyberbullying to the national stage. And I think by raising awareness, we're one step closer to finding solutions. And I think that's very important. What do you think we didn't know before that we know now about how pervasive it is or even how easy it is? Yeah, I think the f a few of the things that I've learned um, are that it seems like uh, bullying is magnified when it's out there in the cyber world, in the electronic world. Um, there's a couple of things that are different that in-person bullying doesn't have. I think you can hide behind um, a handle or a name, mm -hmm. hiding behind the screen makes everything very um, non-human. You know, you don't see the humanity of another person. You just don't see the pain in their eyes that you're causing. And it allows people, I think, normal people that would not say or do things to another person act in really horrible, mean ways. And I think that's part of the electronic bullying. Mm -hmm. I think also the fact that it can get spread to many, many people really quickly. I mean, it's much more than a classroom full of people sure. or even a cafeteria. It could go to hundreds, if not thousands, and if things go viral, then hundreds of thousands of people really, really quickly. And the target doesn't know how viral it is or not. It just magnifies in their head. And also the biggest thing, which I think really played a big part in Tyler's story, is that you can't escape the bullying. It's not like it happens at school and you can come home to the safety of your room or your home or your dorm room. But anywhere you have an iPhone, anywhere you have mm -hmm. a computer, you can open up and log into and see the tweets and the posts. And Tyler logged in. He didn't have an iPhone at the time. It was pre-iPhone. Okay. So that makes things worse because now you have more access sure. to things. But he had a laptop computer and he logged back into the tweets and posts over 59 times in a short seven, eight, nine day period. He even took screenshots of the posts. So he had access to them mm -hmm. and he was looking at them and he only became consumed with and and tortured by, I suppose, the words of people that were trying to humiliate him. Right. And he didn't know how to shut it down and, and find the help that he had available. And I think that that is really critical in the story. I think you need to shut it down, turn it off, and, and you need to reach out for help. And that's part of what you're working to do now. We should point out, too, it's not just, it's amazing how bullying has grown. It isn't just kids at school who are experiencing it, or even kids in college. I mean, I would make the case that you see it all the time now on social media, grown adults right. bullying other grown adults and hiding behind that anonymity of some sort of a handle or a, you know, even a fake name. Some of the things that really stood out to me is that 43% of kids say they've been bullied online. 70% of kids say that they see it. And that's, I know, one of the things that you're working to change is that they not just see it, but they say stand something. up and they say something. Right. And so, so how are you getting that message out? Well, we are promoting upstanders. That are, those are people that are bystanders, because in 80% of all bullying situations, there are bystanders. And certainly on the in internet and electronic world, there are bystanders, many, many bystanders. And we want those bystanders to speak up and, and stand up and speak out and become an upstander. So that's one of the things we have a pledge to promote becoming an upstander. Mm -hmm. um, and that is saying something, um, either calling out the behavior or the words. If you feel safe, we always want people to be safe. Right. We don't want anyone getting in harm's way. And sometimes just acknowledging those words aren't acceptable, those actions aren't acceptable, is enough to change behavior. But if it's not enough to change behavior or if you're not safe, mm -hmm. then you need to know to tr tell a trusted 
person of right. authority, in adults, another authority, or in young people, to tell an, a, an adult. Because I think that's also, if an adult had been brought in, and to tie their story, maybe things would have been different. Could have and certainly if some of the bystanders that have been seeing things had spoken up, or even spoken to Tyler, which is another way to be a vice upstander, is to speak to the target. Make sure they're safe. Make sure they know that you're there for, for support and uh, friendship, and to make sure they know where to go for their support. I know part of what you're working on, too, um, in Washington is to get this act passed in your son's name, that institutions of higher learning, that they have policies in place, and um, so we look forward to an update on that fight. Um, and really appreciate you taking some time for us today and for speaking out and Thank for you. making a difference. Thank Jane. you for having me. Yeah. Thank you very much.